Melissa, it's Lena. I'm going to talk to you about Mr. Corling now. And I promise I won't do it in that voice for the entire time. Um, if you could make me sound like, like my voice deeper in any of this, that would be super, super cool. Because otherwise I sound like a little tiny child. And that's a little creepy. Okay, here we go. Hopefully you can get something good out of this, my ramblings. <sighs> okay. I can honestly say that Mr. Corling's the best teacher I've ever had, and I know he's always going to be that person that I remember throughout my life as the guy that, the teacher that changed the way I, look at, I looked at the world and changed the way I learned, you know, just my entire process of learning. Like, I mean, I've always been interested in lots of topics, but history has just become totally different to me it's it's such a dynamic thing now it's not just stuff that you read about in books it's the stuff that shapes where we are today and you know as people as a culture and as a society um i always enjoy the way that mr k just gets so into his lessons i mean he just the way he <laughs> like the way he reads books out loud to us or his weird little nerd Elmo voice that he uses to create weird hypotheticals. Or, because he taught us this, logical fallacies, such as a false dilemma or a straw man argument. You know, such things as these. Um, and I mean, who can forget when he dressed up as like a renaissance man with his big white puffy t-shirt and his flask dangling from his hip. I mean, come on. What kind of teacher does that? He just, he's so dedicated and his passion for teaching just like, it beams out of him into the entire class until, you know, unless you're really stupid and you decide to sleep through all of it, you're just enthralled and it almost doesn't feel like learning at that point. Like, all throughout the day, I just look forward to going to Mr. Corling's class. Like, last year, it was without a doubt the best class. And now having, this year, having two class periods with him, it's just, it just makes my day that much better. And he has the coolest classroom. I mean, he just takes it to a whole nother level. I mean, you have movie posters all over the walls. You have, like, more books than the Rockland Library and all sorts of cool music going all the time and it's just such a fun environment like it just feels like the classroom you want to go to and you know it's really hard for me to imagine that it's not going to be there next year and even weirder for me to think that he's gonna have other students next year and that it's not going to be us I mean I feel like he's had such a big part in my life and I can't imagine that happening with anybody else and him like not being here like Whisk is just going to feel so wrong without him he's just such a part of my school experience now that it, I just don't know what next year is going to look like it's just going to be completely different and probably not in a good way, you know? Um, I mean, he's just, he's just gone so far and above the call of duty in these past two years. I mean, he takes his job so much more seriously than any teacher I've ever had. He's so invested in the success of each of his students, and not for some personal gain, but just to know that he helped somebody succeed that couldn't have believed in themselves otherwise. I mean, I don't know if I could have walked into that AP exam feeling any more confident. I mean, because I had him as a teacher, I knew I was going to conquer that test. And, you know, I came out the other side feeling like a champion and I don't know if any other teacher could have given me that feeling it you know it's been a really incredible two years and I just feel so blessed and so thankful 
that, you know, he came into my life when he did, and I don't think I'll ever be the same because of it. I think I'm a totally different student now than I was before. I feel curious about why authors write the way they do, or how a certain book fits into the timeline of history and how it's shaped by the historical events that were happening at the time. And, you know, like, I want to go read more classics or, you know, those typical high school boring books that you get forced to read. I just think, I, I just think I'd find them really interesting now. And, and even though he doesn't like Harry Potter or refuses to read it or watch it out of whatever Tolkien loyalty he feels like he has, he's still my favorite teacher. And he has to and must make his children read Harry Potter because otherwise he's doing them a huge disservice. I mean, you can't even, he can't even pretend to be the amazing literature fan he is without Harry Potter. I mean, please. Please. It's, it's Harry Potter. You know, Alyssa, it's Harry Potter. Come on. <sighs> it's just so hard because I don't know how I could I don't know how to explain how important and how amazing he is. He's just it's <laughs> it's really frustrating when there are no words to fully encompass how amazing he is. I mean, all I can say is thank you so much. And never forget us. I mean, we're your best class ever. We had a literature dress-up party. I mean, who does that? We're teenagers. We're not supposed to like classic literature. <laughs> Okay, Alyssa, hopefully you can get some good stuff out of that and make me not sound like a crazy person and make me sound awesome. And, yeah, make a good video because he's worth it. Bye-bye.